Uh, good morning, my dear participants. Today is the fourth day of our FDP, and today's first session is on humanities. We have with us Mr. Bhaskar Kosi, who is a personal trainer and a yoga instructor as well. He will deliver a talk on yoga and personal well-being. So I will briefly dis dis introduce him to this session. So Mr. Bhaskar Kosi is an International Sports Science Association certified fitness trainer and he is also a diploma in health and nutrition from IGNO, New Delhi. Uh, he is an yoga instructor from SVYSA Bengaluru, trained in advanced strength and conditioning pilot sports injury management from Gaio Fitness Academy, Mumbai. And he is working as founder club manager, Snap Fitness, Silpukri, Guwahati. He is in health and fitness line from last three decades. So I welcome him and I will just hand over this session so that he can deliver his talk. Thank you. Thank you, Opurpa Vikas Kolita. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm Asuka Kosik as introduced. So today we'll be talking about yoga and meditation, of course, meditation and pranayama for fitness. Yoga is a vast subject. It has got a lot of different uh, applications, but we will be only concentrating on the basic uh, fitness related uh, part. So let us uh, start the presentation now. So uh, yoga, pranayama and meditation if we want it to apply for health and fitness, overall health and fitness, then uh, somewhat different angle we have to choose. So maybe from different angle we have to see. So first, let us come to uh, the definitions of uh, health and fitness. So before going into it, we should know what is health and what is fitness. So. Uh, Basically, the definition of fitness provided by who? It is it, uh, it, it is it says that health is a state of complete physical, mental, social well-being, and not merely a sense of diseases. So the thing is, uh, if we don't have any disease, that doesn't mean we are, we we have uh, very good health. We are in very good health. It is totally. Uh, you should be physically healthy. You should be healthy at your mental mental state, and also you should be healthy in your society. So it is a complete package. It is not a single thing. Health is not a single thing. It is a total complete package of physical, mental, social well-being. So now uh, our our physical health and the mental health is very closely connected. So a physically unhealthy person is sure to suffer from medical sickness. If you are physically not fit, then it is, it is certain that you will be facing a lot of uh, physical problems. Similarly, on the other side, uh, if a person is sure to suffer from, uh, if, on the other hand, if mentally, if you are very healthy, then you can enjoy your health to the maximum. So your physical health and mental health are both are interrelated. So now let us try to define the uh, definition of fitness. What is fitness? Generally, uh, fitness, when we when we see a person with a very good physique, we refer him to be fit. But actually the definition, definition of fitness is not that. Physical fitness is a state of health and well-being. It is a state of health and well-being. More specifically, it is the ability of a per, uh, person to perform aspects of sports, occupation, and daily activity. It means uh, the stress, the stress put upon day-to-day -day, our day-to-day -day activity on our physiology. How 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 efficiently our our uh, entire physical uh, body and the mental body handle this uh, stress uh, the level uh, that is called the 
fitness right? that is the fitness level of that person means our body should be efficiently handling all the stress related to our occupation and daily life so now now we know that uh, health is a complete package and fitness is our ability so now next thing is uh, we can divide fitness in two basic categories one is basic fitness one is advanced fitness so uh, here first uh, our goal should be to acquire basic fitness so without without acquiring basic fitness if we try to uh, develop our advanced level of fitness then we can injure ourselves or the negative result will come so first we should we should build a very good base on basic fitness fitness level so uh, basically advanced fitness is for the sportsmen uh, or those uh, people who who have already acquired the basic fitness they have practiced and achieved mastery over the basic fitness so now uh, advanced level of fitness is uh, out of the context of this uh, webinar because uh, first we should know we should practice and we should develop the basic fitness components so by uh, by basic fitness uh, we, we refer to basically the five uh, components of fitness one is your body composition your body composition means uh, your the fat mass the muscle mass the water weight and the minerals and minerals in your body there 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 is a certain uh, range for particular a particular a person of particular age uh, age weight and height he should have this range of uh, muscle mass in his body he should have he should have certain amount of uh, fat mass in his, his body he should have a certain amount of water weight in his body and uh, he should have some certain amount of uh, mineral minerals in your in his body so these things if if a person a uh, person can maintain this range within this range these parameters then we will tell him that he fulfills first component of basic fitness then your cardiovascular endurance cardio means your heart and vascular means the entire network of, of capillaries veins and arteries so that is called uh, your cardiovascular system so your cardiovascular efficiency is one of the main uh, components of fitness so if your cardiovascular system is efficient enough to uh, give you supply you required amount of oxygen uh, then we can say that the person is uh, fulfills the second uh, criteria of basic fitness then third one is your muscular strength muscular strength means it is the uh, amount of weight you can lift at a time for one once if uh, how much weight you can lift for once that is your muscular strength means at a time how much strength you can exert so this is the third uh, criteria of basic fitness then mu muscular endurance muscular endurance means we are not concerned about how much weight you lift but how long you can continue to do certain amount of work that is your muscular endurance so that is the fourth point of your uh, basic fitness and components of basic fitness and the last one is flexibility so it is a very vital component of uh, basic fitness so you should be flexible enough to do the day to day life work your your body should support you your flexibility should support you so these are the five basic components of fitness uh, which we want to develop which which we we want to uh, build to certain level limit so now uh, let us discuss about benefits of all any kind of physical activity so first thing is any exercise can reduce stress fatigue improve alertness and overall well being the secondly exercise and other physical activities produce endorphins and improves sleep quality which in turn reduces stress simple thing like acupuncture massage therapy or breathing deeply can cause body to produce endorphins so these are the uh, things we can do 
to enhance our uh, endorphin levels. So endorphin is a feel good hormone. These are the hormones which makes us feel good, feel happy. So uh, next is regular aerobic exercise decreases overall stress level, stabilize and ele elevate mood, improves sleep and self-esteem. So the the fitness fitness um, thing we are involved in uh, that should provide us not only the muscular strength, muscular endurance, but cardiovascular endurance also. So this aerobic exercise is uh, basically the cardiovascular exercises. Now these are the benefits of uh, doing any kind of physical uh, work. So now let us go to uh, yoga. So today our topic is uh, yoga, pranayama and meditation for fitness. So let us try to define what is yoga first. So the term yoga has its uh, verbal root to yung, yug. Yug means joining. So yugate anene iti yoga. It is it is a slope basically. Yoga is which it joins. So it is joining of our individual self to the all pervasive universal self. It is the connection of our individual self to the universal self. That is yoga. The main uh, aim of the yoga is this. It is it is the expansion of narrow, constrict, egoistic personality to all pervasive, eternal, blissful state of reality. So uh, yoga is not doing some only some physical activities. It, it has got uh, lot of uh, it, it is it has got connection with the uh, our individual self and the universal self. So there are two different schools of yoga. One is Hatha Yoga, one is Patanjali Yoga. So basically Hatha Yoga is, uh, it is a stream of yoga where Hat Hat means you have to, you have to do. But that means uh, they, they forcefully try to achieve some level of uh, fitness and uh, you have to stretch the exercises till a certain point forcefully. But in Patanjali Yoga, it is, it is uh, according to Patanjali Yoga, uh, it is as far as you can. Means you, you go, you stretch yourself up to the limit you can go and you be there. It is a somewhat static and steady state yoga. And Hatha Yoga is somewhat, uh, somewhat uh, tough. So, uh, Basically, according to Patanjali Yoga, yoga is, yoga is a conscious process of gaining mastery over your mind. Uh, Patanjali says this, that yoga, through yoga, by practicing yoga, you can achieve mastery over your mind. So, in yoga, there are four different paths to achieve your ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is your Mutsa Prapti. So, uh, to achieve that, there are four different uh, paths. They are Jnana Yoga, Raja Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and Karma Yoga. So, these, these four paths, each of these uh, paths have their own steps towards, for, to forward towards the ultimate goal. In Asana and Pranayama, they are third and fourth steps. And meditation is a seventh step of Raja Yoga. So they are in Raja Yoga, there are eight steps. There are eight steps to advance in uh, towards your ultimate goal. Uh, out of those, uh, yoga, asana, and pranayama is third and fourth, and meditation is the seventh step of Raja Yoga. So yoga is a very uh, fast. Uh, it's a process. It's a it's a lifestyle. It's a uh, totally, it's, it includes a lot of philosophy. So we cannot teach uh, yoga in one or two days class or over, uh, over a platform, uh, online platform. So we can we can just give you overviews of, we cannot teach, even even we cannot teach you asana, pranayama and meditation over online platform. The one-on-one -on -one, uh, training is very essential for these things. But anyway, we can give you a little overview of asana, pranayama, and meditation. 
so uh, in this in this uh, webinar our, our main goal is to discuss yoga we will not uh, not uh, discuss the spiritual side of yoga or philosophical side of yoga. Today we will discuss only the uh, yoga as a tool for health and fitness, then pranayama as a tool for health and fitness, and meditation as a tool for our overall health and fitness. So now uh, let us. Uh, discuss uh, what are the basic benefits of yoga, pranayama and meditation. So uh, it is similar like uh, all, the, all the physical activity provides uh, these uh, benefits but uh, especially in yoga it gives instant results in boosting mood, it changes our mood instantaneously and decreases an anxiety. Uh, when you feel stressed, you do a session of yoga and you'll feel uh, you, you change in mood. So you, you, your anxiety will slowly go off. So it is very helpful in reducing uh, your anxiety and boosting mood. As, uh, as you know, yoga is mind and body practice which combines physical postures, breathing control and relaxation. These three things are combined in yoga uh, practices. Uh, what are they? They are uh, physical posters, some physical posters with uh, controlled breathing and relaxation. So, uh, the second point, third point is yoga helps reduce stress, overall stress, uh, lower blood pressure, and lowers heart rate. So, this, this is the very uh, significant benefit of yoga. Uh, after doing a session of yoga, you will feel these things. Reduction in your overall stress level, uh, lower, uh, your blood pressure will be lower and lower heart rate. <clears throat> Next is yoga can improve balance, flexibility, range of motor motion, strength, and manage chronic conditions. So, the benefit of yoga it improves your balance. See, balance is a thing which uh, slowly with age it will decrease. Again, flexibility, it will decrease with your aging process. Range of motion, it will become limited with your aging process. So these things you can maintain uh, with yoga. And obviously, the chronic diseases that can be managed with yoga. Now, pranayama. Pranayama is a conscious breathing of breath control technique. It's a technique by which we control our breath. If done from uh, properly, pranayama can support the parasympathetic nervous system, resulting in relaxation response, which further reduces stress. So, uh, by this controlled breathing of pranayama, pranayama, we can get relaxation response, which will further reduce our stress. Now, uh, coming to meditation. <coughs> meditation is a process where we focus all our attentions and eliminate all the conflicting thoughts which further release stress. So the, by this process will enhance mental, physical and emotional well-being. So meditation is to concentrate your entire focus into one point and eliminating slowly eliminating all the conflicting thoughts. So med meditation affects the body in certain exactly opposite that stress does what stress does stress stress elevates our pulse rate stress there is a hormone called stress hormone which is called cortisol cortisol is a stress hormone so this stress hormone the function of this stress hormone is to raise your heart rate your uh, breath rate will increase uh, this is very catabolic hormone it, it starts uh, hitting your body muscle cells and it creates a lot of havoc. So meditation does the reverse. It, it, it reduces your pulse rate. It can uh, reduce your, it, it, can, it can help in <clears throat> reducing your uh, respiratory rate. So it's very effective for stress management. 
it triggers body's relaxation response restores the body to claim state and help the body to repair itself from physical effect of stress so uh, the physical effect uh, of stress that can be uh, repaired with meditation if we do regular meditation uh, then uh, both physical and mental benefits we can we can get from it get from it so now uh, these are the benefits of yoga pranayama and meditation so now the thing is let us move towards the yoga practices so for fitness health and fitness will be basically doing the asanas uh, pranayama and meditation now uh, before doing any exercise uh, there are there are some procedures some uh, procedures to uh, follow to be followed so the uh, main main uh, thing is we have to design some uh, training cycle for uh, for yoga how to practice yoga what will do first what will do next so that way we have to design some uh, training cycle so here we'll be discussing one demo uh, training cycle you may follow this thing or you may follow other uh, design uh, by you just I, uh, to give you an idea how to follow the entire cycle i am i'm just uh, showing you a particular basic uh, training cycle so this is a demo training, training cycle for yoga and pranayama so first in this cycle we'll start with loosening exercises these are the warm -up, basically warm up exercises any any physical activity so start with warm up because uh, before doing the physical activity the circulation of blood throughout your uh, entire body should be even and uh, then there should be some uh, temperature rise in your body slightly we should raise our uh, body temperature before doing any exercises so the losing exercise are the exercises which will work as warm up in this training cycle and after completing the exercises will then go to surya namaskar uh, surya namaskar is a uh, it's a chain of exercises it, it has got uh, 12 exercises basically which are done back to back so this is a very good uh, physical exercise for for overall toning your overall physical uh, fitness to enhance your physical fitness surya namaskar is a very good exercise uh, in Surya Namaskar, there are there are different uh, forms nowadays. Uh, basically, it uh, originally it was twelve steps, but nowadays a lot of people do it in ten steps. In Power Yoga and Sports Yoga, they remove the relaxation posters from Surya Namaskar chain and they do it regularly. So that way they can burn a lot of calories, maximum amount of calories. So after loosening exercise or warm up will be doing Surya Namaskar. So after Surya Namaskar, we'll be moving towards, we'll take some rest and then we'll moving towards yoga posters. So these are the steady state posters where we'll be, we'll be holding the final poster for a certain amount of time. We'll be going to the final poster of the uh, yoga asana, asana and we'll hold it there for certain amount of time so we'll be uh, in this uh, the webinar we'll discuss at least uh, one or two exercises for every sitting standing uh, supine and prone then uh, after completing yoga posters then we can start pranayama in pranayama also we'll be uh, discussing very simple Foldable uh, pranayamas, Chandra uh, Anulam Bilam, Surya Anulam Bilam, and Nari Sudhi. So these are a very simple kind of uh, pranayama we can do. And
after pranayama we can end our session and meditation meditation maybe if we have surplus amount of time then after this uh, we can slowly start our meditation process but or otherwise we can follow this in a certain uh, period of time in a day and in other time we can do the meditation like in morning maybe we will we'll be doing yoga practices and at the evening we can do meditation so it depends upon your uh, choice and your uh, time availability and your comfort so this is the basic uh, training cycle uh, which we can follow or we can make some changes or we can follow uh, this type of uh, cycles designed by uh, customize according to your need so now uh, first we will we'll, we'll discuss the loosening and loosening exercises as i told you this is basically warm up exercises so what the benefits of warm up exercises it prepares your body for the exercise main exercise these are also exercise but uh, it, uh, these are not done so intensely these are done to raise the body temperature to a certain level uh, secondly to circulate blood evenly throughout the body and prepare your body for the exercise so in losing exercise first we will be doing spot jogging so you can as you can see in the ZIF uh, uh, there are slow spot jogging uh, secondly this forward jogging then this backward jogging and then side by side jogging so these four things we will do on the spot back to back so here on the spot slow jogging we can we can slowly jog uh, on the spot where we are standing uh, for a certain amount of time maybe uh, depending upon your capacity maybe 10 15 20 30 seconds or up to one minute you can jog on the spot then we'll be moving towards forward jogging in forward jogging what we'll do we'll rise our knee to forward hip we'll rise our knee forward uh, direction in forward direction we'll, and we'll keep jogging on the spot so from spot jogging slow spot jogging we'll be moving towards forward jogging so again we can maintain it for maybe 10 15 20 seconds then we'll be moving towards backward jogging so in backward jogging what we'll do we'll we'll uh, try to touch the butt buttocks through our heel uh, so in this uh, way we'll do backward jogging we'll lean forward a little bit uh, your body will lean forward and to maintain the balance and you'll try to touch your buttocks through your uh, with your heels so this is backward jogging uh, again we will continue it for maybe 10 to 15 20 seconds as per depending upon our capacity or uh, need then we will be doing side by side jogging so this is a continuous process from slow spot jogging to forward jogging to backward jogging to side by side jogging and in side by side jogging what we will do we will throw our legs outward uh, from the backward jogging position we will try to throw our lower limb outward so this is a cycle basically if we do each exercise for 10 seconds then the entire uh, spot jogging cycle will take 40 seconds so that way maybe depending upon our capacity we can do it for two to three minutes so this is the spot jogging exercise where we will be jogging on the spot so after doing uh, this spot jogging our heart rate will go up we will be breathing a little bit heavily so next is your relaxation mokodoti uh, in mokodoti we will relax so what is mokodoti in mokodoti what we will do we will support uh, our hands over uh, we will place our hands over our knees we will bend forward we will uh, the chest will be upright and we will be looking forward and we will be inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth forcefully slowly we will inhale through our nose and we will be exhaling through our mouth forcefully this way uh, our heart rate will come down our respiratory rate will be regulated and the oxygen required the oxygen demand increased uh, 
due to the spot jogi will be uh, satisfied so uh, this is a mukha jogi is very good uh, relaxation uh, exercises so any instead of time we become uh, we will be breathing heavily we can do mukha jogi then after mukha jogi will be doing forward and backward bending so this forward and backward bending what will do we will stand straight and we will raise our hand above our head uh, the hands will touch our ears and we will lean backward and then we will release our body drop down our body from hip and we will try to touch the floor and uh, while coming down they, they should be free fall there should not be any rigidity or stiffness just freely hang your body and again from lower position we will go up and lean backward again you come forward and you release your body so this should be a, a spontaneous moment there should not be any jerky moment and it should be very softly done so this is forward and backward bending so after squat jogging and mukha dhoki we will be doing forward and backward bending so after doing this uh, forward backward we can repeat it for 10 15 times maybe around 10 times and then we'll be going to side bend so in side bend it's a very good uh, it provides very good stretch to our both the sides so here we will be uh, standing both the leg out of our shoulder width distance it's uh, the shoulder width uh, i will place our toes out of our shoulder width and then we'll be raising our hands both, both on uh, towards both the sides and we'll stand still now we'll be slowly bending towards the right side first and slowly we'll try to catch the ankle and the other hand will be straight and uh, we'll be looking at our uh, tip of our fingers of the left hand so from this position we will come to the starting position vertical position and then again left side so this way we can do 10 times maybe starting with 5 5 times and slowly we can increase it to 10 10 times so this is the side bending both side bending so after both side bending we will be doing the twisting these exercises this should not be very done very stiff or rigidly this should be done very softly so these are warm up basically we are doing it for warm up so next is twisting twisting is we will again uh, stand still with uh, shoulder width uh, shoulder width apart our legs will be shoulder width apart and we will standing still and as shown in the ZIF we will be spreading our hands forward and then first we will start from right side we will be twisting only the upper body, the hip, the, the torso will move both sides, the hip will be facing forward. So the hip should not, there should not be any moment on our hip and legs. Legs should not turn, they will be facing forward. So this is the twisting exercise. So after squat jogging, we have done mukhodoti, forward backward bending, side bending and now this twisting. So both sides twisting will be doing and then then we'll be moving towards Pavana Muktasana Kriya. So this is a very relaxing uh, exercise and it's very uh, helpful uh, as a warm-up exercise. So here we'll lie down in supine position and we'll catch just below our knees uh, and bend the pull the pull the legs towards our chest. We'll, uh, we'll raise our head and we'll try to uh, touch forehead with the knees and then the other leg will be straight uh, in this position we can hold it or we can do a circle with the other leg the straight leg we can make a circle uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise maybe five five times again releasing to the super position and again catching the other leg and we'll be making the circle with the uh, first leg. So this is the Pavana Muktasana Kriya. This is very good uh, 
exercise for as a warm up and then uh, rocking and rolling after pravana muktasan kriya we will be moving towards rocking and rolling rocking and rolling is a very uh, good uh, relax relaxation exercise it gives very good uh, support to your uh, spinal cord so you feel relaxed your entire back region will feel relax relaxation here what we'll do we'll sit on a mat we'll we'll catch uh, on our ankles uh, with both of both of our hands uh, and then we'll bend the knees and we'll we'll try to keep the forehead along with the knees pressing against the knees and we'll be rolling backward uh, and again we'll be from uh, rolling we'll be coming to sitting position so that way we'll repeat uh, rocking and rolling uh, forward and backward and uh, this way we'll be maybe uh, doing 10 15 times so these are the warm up exercises and this should be uh, done very slowly uh, which will prepare our body for the main asanas so after this uh, entire thing uh, warm up thing uh, we will be resting for a while so in warm up what we have done is uh, squat jogging relaxation mukhadoti forward backward bending side bending both side bending twisting and rocking and rolling so after that we start again according to our training cycle according to our training cycle uh, first losing exercises after that we'll be starting the surya namaskar so surya namaskar as i told you earlier it's a it's a practice in yoga exercises incorporating flow sequence of some 12 gracefully linked asanas so these are the asanas posters which are linked together in a sequence so it can be done back to back the set of 12 asanas is dedicated to the hindu sol solar deity surya so surya namaskar the name come, came from the deity surya so uh, the 12 exercises uh, are dedicated towards the uh, deity Surya. So Surya Namaskar, basically first let us discuss something about the benefits of Surya Namaskar. So the benefit of Surya Namaskar is number one, strengthen the body. It gives strength to our entire body because now all the posters hit different parts of our body. So the muscles will get stronger. Secondly, it helps relax our mind. So, in 12th step, Surya Namaskar, there are two relaxation posters uh, in between uh, in between the entire asanas. We do two relaxation posters, and overall, entire the cycle will provide us mental relaxation. It improves flexibility. So, our flexibility will increase if we regularly practice. Uh, Surya Namaskar. So Surya Namaskar is a complete package basically for health and fitness purpose. It's a very suitable, compact and uh, regularly followable uh, sequence of exercises. After that, it helps burn extra body fat. So it burns huge lot of calorie. And if we want only calorie burning point of view, then we can do it in 10 steps. We can remove the relaxation posters and that way it will burn more calories. So, it burns huge lot of body fat. After that, uh, number five is helps build mental focus. So, it is a it is a benefit of Surya Namaskar. Surya, Surya Namaskar builds up builds up your mental focus. Then number six is improves blood circulation. So again, any exercise uh, done um, properly to the it will enhance your blood circulation. So, similarly, the Surya Namaskar also improves your blood circulation. Improves functions of internal organs. These posters, they put pressure on the internal organs also. So, the functions of internal organs, organs will be also improved. Then, eight number is your improves muscle tone. So, as these posters put uh, stress over different parts of body muscles uh, basically skeletal muscles so it tones the skeletal muscles 
and improves muscle tone then improves posture so the basically postures are deviated due to our bad lifestyle so uh, by doing regularly surya namaskar we can improve our postures help cope with insomnia so the lack of sleep or insomnia uh, it helps the, if, we, if we start doing surya namaskar in proper way for regular basis it helps to cope with insomnia it strengthens the body as our muscles, muscles muscular system will go strong then the entire body will be strong so now these are the benefits of surya namaskar so the very beneficial uh, exercise which we can do for our overall health and fitness and well-being there are 12 different mantras used with surya namaskar basically in uh, Surya Namaskar done in yoga, it, it comes with 12 mantras. These 12 mantras are the different names of the sun, God's sun. The sun, sun in Hindu uh, philosophy, sun has got 12 different names. And uh, these 12 names are uh, different uh, names of the sun. So here, before doing each cycle of Surya Namaskar, one name of sun is Santek. So we will we'll have to, if you do properly in yoga, uh, Surya Namaskar, then we have to sun uh, one name of uh, the sun before doing one cycle of exercise. That way, so total of 12 exercises, there are 12 mantras and there are 12, ex uh, 12 cycles. So, so 12 exercises are done back to back, which makes one cycle. So this 12 exercise after chanting one Surya Mantra, then we'll do one cycle. That way, back to back and repeat it for 12 more times. 12 mantras, 12 times, 10 cycles. So this way it is done. So let us see something about the 12 mantras. What are the different 12 names of the sun? <clears throat> so these are the 12 Surya Namaskar Mantra or different names of sun. Same sun. So, first one is Om Mitraya Namaha. Second is Om Ramaye Namaha. Number three is Om Suryaya Namaha. Number four is Vanave Namaha. Number five, Khagaya Namaha. Number six, Usne Namaha. Number seven, Hirenda Garbaya Namaha. Number eight, Marisaya Namaha. Number nine, Adityaya Namaha, number 10, Sabitraya Namaha, number 11, Akaya Namaha, number 12, Maskaraya Namaha. This 12 Mitra, Rabaya, Surya, Bhanava, Khagaya, Usna, Usne, Hiranyagarbha, Morisase, Morisase, Adityaya, Sabitraya, Akaya, Maskaraya. These are, these are names basically different names of Surya. So as Surya Namaskar is dedicated to Surya, we'll be starting number one mantra, Om Mitraya Nama, we'll do 12 exercises back to back. Then again, we'll be starting Rabaya Nama, then we'll be doing again, we'll repeat 12, 12 cycles back to back. So that way, uh, the 12 mantras will be started and 12 rounds of 12 exercises will be done. So now, let us see how Surya Namaskar actually done. So there are 12 posters as I said. The first poster is Tarasana or prayer poster. Here the center in, in the center as shown in the picture. This is the Tarasana or prayer poster pose. From here we'll raise our hand above our head and we'll lean backward. And then from the, the position number one till position number one. From position number one, we'll be doing Pada Hastasana number two. So we'll be slowly coming down. We'll try to touch the ground with our palms and we'll try to touch the knees with our forehead. So this is Pada Hastasana number two is Pada Hastasana. First one of was Tarasana or prayer pose. From there, we'll be coming down to Pada Hastasana. So 
will be maintaining it for a while as depending upon our capacity i'm i'm just uh, i want to tell you the steady state surya namaskar uh, format but there are some format where they do it back to back rigorously uh, you can to make you understand we'll be studying the slowly done one where we will be uh, we'll be holding in, in each position for a while so in the second poster is pada hastasana well will be just uh, maintaining our normal breathing will be uh, uh, holding and that pada hastasana position for a while after pada hastasana will be moving towards ardha chakrasana chandrasana so in ardha chandrasana that is lower lungs position uh, this is number 3 position in the picture uh, here will be throwing our one leg back the our entire body weight will be on two hands and one feet so uh, we'll push the uh, hip forward chest upright and we'll be looking forward so this is the or the sandrasana poster or lower lungs poster number 3 so from this poster will be coming down to samatulasana in samatulasana what will do will bring the bend leg backward and will be trying to balance the entire body on the toes and our both the hands in this pose poster will be holding for a while uh, the person uh, we should be cautious enough that the entire back should be in straight line our entire back from head to toe it should be in straight line so the, in this uh, number 4 position this is samatulasana position where we will be holding it for a while after this samatulasana we will be moving towards sasankasana or child pose number 5 in the picture it is shown in number 5 it's a very relaxing poster this is a relaxation poster so we will be coming to the relaxation poster number 5 poster so in this in this poster we will be resting for a while with maintaining the, the, the normal breathing will be uh, be there for a while after uh, sasankasana or child pose we will be going towards astanga no uh, astanga pranam or eight limb celebration number 6 so this number 6 uh, number 6 position here six points will be touching ground our forehead both the hands chest and uh, the toes knees so these are the points which will be touching the ground and this is called the astanga pranam astanga pranam or eight limb salutation pro, uh, poster so this is the number 6 poster we will be holding it there for a while and then we will be moving towards the number 7 poster number 7 poster is bhujangasana or kopra poster here we will be pushing our chest upward with the hip should be pushed it forward and chest upright and we will drop dropping down our head we should drop down the head uh, this is uh, bhujangasana poster Uh, those who are having lower back pain maybe they should not do the full uh, range of motion they should do uh, till uh, their belly button touching the ground belly button should not rise above uh, beyond ground belly button should touch the ground so this is the uh, cobra poster so we'll be holding it there for a while and after the cobra poster will be moving towards number 8 poster that is parvatasana so this is parvatasana where we we'll raise our hip high up and the entire body weight will be on hands and legs and we'll drop down the head we'll be looking inward so inverted v this is like inverted v we'll be doing the uh, parvatasana on mountain pose this way and we'll be trying to hold it there for a while and after parvatasana again will be coming to pose number 9 which is sasankasana in sasankasana this child pose it is again relaxation poster where will be relaxing for a while after sasankasana 
will be again coming down to Adra Sandrasana or lower lungs poster. Now, in the pose number three, the right leg was uh, thrown back and left leg was bent. Now, the left leg was come forward to be bent and right leg will be back. So, this is the number 10 poster, Sasantasan, or child poster. Or Sandra, Sandra, sorry, under Sandrasana or lower lungs poster. So, after pose number 10, we'll be moving towards pose number 11. So, it is again Pada Vastasana, it is similar to pose number 2. So, we'll be turning back to Pada Vastasana. And from Pada Vastasana, we'll be moving towards Tarasana, pose number 12, which is the initial poster. So, these are the 12 exercises, 12 posters, which we'll be doing, we'll be doing back to back. So, the first one is Tarasana or prayer poster, second one is Pada Vastasana, third one is Adra Chandrasana or lower lungs, number four is Samatulasana, number five is Sasankasana or child pose, number six is Astangra Nakranam or eight limb salutation, number seven is Bhujangasana number or Cobra pose, number eight is Parvatasana or mountain pose, number nine is again Sasankasana or child pose. Then number 10 is Ardha Chandrasana or lower lungs pose and Pada Vastasana, 11 number and 12 number is Tarasana. It will be coming to the original position. So this is the uh, Surya Namaskar and we can uh, practice this uh, in a regular basis. It's a very good exercise for toning your muscles. Uh, it is very good for burning a lot of calories and it gives you very good muscle tone. Our training uh, cycle. First, we have done loosening exercises. Now, we have done the Surya Namaskar. Now, we will be moving towards the yoga posters. So, after Surya Namaskar, we will be going towards yoga posters. So, in yoga posters, what we will do? We will do standing posters. Then, sitting posters, then prone posters, and then supine posters. These four posters will be seeing one or two exercises of each poster. Uh, there are a lot of ways different people uh, do this yoga asanas, asanas in different way, but the basic is same and the format is different. Uh, so this is the simplest uh, format which you can follow at least. So first we will be discussing standing poster. Standing poster, uh, we will be standing for this exercise, the initial poster is Tarasana or standing poster. So here what we will do, uh, first we will do Ardhakati Sakrasana. So Ardhakati Sakrasana is very good uh, workout. Uh, exercise <coughs> or asana uh, here number one first we'll stand uh, still uh, straight and we'll inhale slowly and raise our uh, right arm sideways slowly uh, to the parallel to the floor and then again we'll rise it till the biceps touches our ear from here we'll stretch the arm upward and then exhale and slowly bend our trunk to the left. Here we should be cautious enough that we should not bend the right elbow or knee. Knee should be straight and elbow should be right elbow should be straight. So we will we'll try to we'll, we'll go to the final position as far as we, we can and we will try to maintain it there with normal breathing for a while and then again we will slowly come down to the initial poster and then slowly drop down the arms and we will come to Tarasan or initial poster and again we will repeat it on the other side. So uh, both sides we will do maybe uh, 
uh, as far as we can first we start with five times each side then we can increase obviously so uh, this is adhakati sakrasana so we should be cautious enough that we should not bend forward or backward this is totally side bending so we should bend sideways so what is the benefit of adhakati sakrasana it reduces fat in waist region stimulates sides of the body gives lateral bending to the spinal cord and improves liver function so it put pressures on our livers it improves liver function uh, fat in waist region so it stimulates the waist region and the sides of the body and the spinal cord is also gives lateral lateral bending to the spinal cords so this is very beneficial exercise and most of the cases everybody can do this and again in standing poses we, we can do ardha sakrasana or half wheel pose so this is also a simple uh, asana which we can perform uh, here we will standing still uh, in tarasan position so we will place our palm to support our lower back in lower back region and fingers pointing outward this way we will be standing and we will be inhaling and bending backward from the lumbar region and after reaching the final position we will drop down the head backward so we will try to maintain it for a while uh, in this final posture and after a while we will slowly come back to the standing position or tarasan so this is ardha sakrasana these are very simple exercises but very effective exercises so the benefits are spinal flexibility so it's it can provide flexibility to our spine spine stimulates spinal nerves all the nerves uh, related to the spine will be uh, stimulated improves circulation of blood to the head so in head region the blood will flow towards head region strengthen neck muscles it puts lot of pressure on your neck muscles expands the six six and shoulder shoulder and chest will be expanded and improves breathing so <coughs> it improves breathing so these are the benefits of ardha chakrasana or half wheel posture so there are some limitations also the people who are having vertigo and should not do this posture because it is somewhat dangerous for them so this is the ardha chakrasana so we have discussed the two standing postures one is ardha kati chakrasana and one is ardha chakrasana this both are very easy to do and uh, yoga postures or asanas so next is sitting postures in sitting postures we will be doing sasankasana so in sasankasana what we will do we will sit uh, as i shown in the picture now number one we will be spreading our legs forward joining the legs we will be sitting uh, our body should be uh, at 90 degree uh, we will be sitting like that and uh, our hands should be by the side of our uh, body now from here we will fold the right leg and then the left leg and sit try to sit on the heels we will be outward we will be tightening uh, bending the uh, legs outward and we will be putting the heel, uh, heels uh, inside and we will be trying to sit on the heels and we will place the palms on our thighs now we will bring the hands uh, to our back and we will try to make a fist on the back, back side of our body in the lower back region so from here we will try to relax our shoulder and we will inhale and first we will go little backward and then we will open the chest and exhale and slowly bend forward and uh, try to raise the forward forehead on the ground everybody Maybe in first in first phase, uh, first practice, everybody may not be able to touch the forehead to the ground. But our our effort should be to touch the forehead 
to the ground to touch the ground with the forehead so in the final position will collapse the shoulders and will be maintaining normal breathing will be try to maintain this uh, final posture for a while and then from there will be slowly again coming up uh, to the sitting position and we'll try to repeat it for maybe 3 4 5 times so this is sasankasana the benefit of this exercise are blood flow to the brain improves improves stimulates the brain flexibility of the spine knee and ankle improves improves helps in improving breath elements so any breathing related elements uh, that that can be improved with this sasankasana and uh, the brain will be stimulated the the brain functioning will be sharp and the flexibility of spinal cord knee and ankle will improve so this is the sasankasana which is sitting posture asanas so we are will be doing so there are some limitations persons with gastric peptic ulcers should avoid this posture so those who are having gastric or peptic ulcers they should not do this exercise so this is the sitting posture uh, exercise one which is sasankasana this is a very simple posture and very beneficial posture after that we will be doing pachimuttasana so pachimuttasana is again it is a sitting posture exercise where we will uh, sit sit uh, spreading our legs forward and we will inhale and raise both the high, uh, hands sideways till solar level parallel to the ground and again we will continue to inhale and raise the arms vertically till our bicep touches the ears from this position we will stretch the trunk and exhale and we will try to bend forward now by exhaling completely we will try to catch the toes and uh, make a hook uh, by touching the fingers of the toe so and again we will be trying to touch the forehead to the knees but again this may not be possible for everyone we will try as far as we can we may not be able to touch our toes uh, we, we may not be able to hook our uh, toes so as far as you can we, we, we will stretch ourselves and we will be trying to be there the maximum position for a while maintaining normal breathing so the final in the final uh, poster the abdominal muscles should, should be relaxed elbow and the abdominal muscle muscles should be relaxed so after maintaining for a while we will be slowly coming down to the normal vertical position so we will be cautious enough that we should not bend the knees and uh, while coming down uh, it should be slow movement so this is the pachimuttasana which is very good exercise the benefits is benefits are flexibility of the back muscles entire back region flexibility in, improves stimulates the spinal nerves again it stimulates the spinal cord nerves improves digestion as it puts uh, pressure on the entire our abdominal region so it, uh, the, it improves digestion removes constipation and energizes the body so it gives vital energy to the body so these are the benefits of machi muttasana so there are some limitations also persons with heart ailments back problems spondylitis should not do this exercise so this is the Paschimottasana exercise. Now in the standing postures we have done Ardha Chakrasana and Ardha Chakrasana. And in sitting postures it is Sasankasana and Paschimottasana. It is not that you have to do this exercise only. I am thus just give, trying to give, give you an idea that we should do likewise some standing, maybe others but some we should include some standing poster uh, asanas some sitting poster asanas and then prone poster asanas in prone poster asana what we'll do we'll discuss bhujangasana so, in bhujangasana 
our cobra pose what we'll do we'll we'll lie down prone on the floor uh, over a mat obviously we'll, we'll spread the mat and we'll lie down prone over a mat then we'll, we'll bend the arms at elbow and place them place the palms both the sides of the lower chest at the level of last rib bone so we'll be placing our palms uh, bending the uh, elbows near the last rib on the ground so here will be we will we'll look at very low pressure is given to your palms we should not pressurize our, our palms comfortably we should place the palms by the side of our rib foot rib or lower chest so from here will be uh, pressing the elbows inward we should not should not be should not allow to spread the elbow out now from this posture we'll inhale and we'll raise our upper body make a arc at the dorsal and neck slowly backward we'll drop down the neck backward as far as possible and we'll be uh, we'll be maintaining at the final posture for a while now we'll look we'll look into that the uh, our belly button the navel should be always touching the ground we should not go rise over that lim uh, limit so we'll be maintaining it with normal breathing for a while we'll exhale slowly and again come down to the normal prone position so this is the bhujangasana it's a it is also a very good uh, exercise simple exercise but very good uh, beneficial exercise basically for lower back region so the benefits are flexibility of the dorsal spine strengthens spinal muscles reduces abdominal fat management of bronchial and bronchial cord and back problems mainly lower back problems this is this exercise is used as a rehab exercise uh, or asanas so bhujangasana is very good exercise for your lower back region but there are some limitations person with surgery should avoid it for two months so after two months they can continue to do this exercise before two months they should not do this exercise not recommended for spondylitis those who are having spondylosis should not do this exercise so this is prone poster uh, asanas number one number two is salavasana this is also a very good uh, exercise and here we will be lying prone now we will be making fist uh, with our palms and we will be placing it under our thighs front thighs now while inhaling, we will be raising both the legs up as far as we can without bending the knees. We should not bend the knees straight with straight leg as far as we can. We should raise the legs and we should try to maintain it for a while with normal breathing. So, after maintaining for a while, slowly we will come back to the initial prone position. In the final position, we should squeeze, squeeze our buttocks and hold it for a while. So this is a salabhasana, very easy to do. Not so easy uh, initially, but with practice, this is obviously a very good and simple uh, asanas which you can do. The benefit is, it's, it is helpful in maintaining sciatica. The sciatica patients can do this and it's, it helps managing sciatica and lower back pain. So, tones kidneys reduces fat on the thighs and buttocks. So, it is very helpful exercise for these things and simple form of exercise. So, uh, Salavasana is uh, the second prone poster asana. So, there are some limitations. Cardiac and diabetic patients should avoid as far as uh, if, if they if they if, if they are cardiac disease or they are having cardiac disease or diabetic patient then they should avoid this exercise person with lower back pain 
should take care while doing it. So uh, maybe initially said they should not do this uh, exercise. First, they should uh, manage with uh, the Bhujangasana and other uh, lower back exercises. After some training, uh, after strengthening somewhat their lower back muscles, fibers, they can do this exercise with care. So this is Salabhasana. So till now, we have done two standing poses uh, asanas. One is Adhakati Sakrasana and one is Adha Sakrasana. Then sitting posture and sitting postures, we have done Sasankasana and Pachimutasana. In prone posture, it is Bhujangasana and Salavasana. Now we will be doing supine posture. So in supine posture, what we will do? We will do Sarvangasana. So this is also a simple but very good effective uh, asanas. So here, what we'll do, we'll lie supine on a floor mat and then we'll inhale and slowly rise both the legs as shown in the picture to the 90 degree, number two position. And then we'll place our arms, arms on our uh, back, lower back below buttock. So we'll place there in as shown in the third position, third third picture in the picture in third position, the hands placed in the lower back to support the trunk. So so here will be we will have to look that our elbows and head should be resting on the ground. We should not lift uh, elbows and our head. So from here we will go to number 4 position, we will be trying to rise at the entire trunk upward vertically. So uh, obviously if we cannot go to the final position then we can raise the legs till third position and after practice slowly we can be in four, number, position number 4 as shown in the picture. So we will be maintaining on that final position for a while. So we will we'll, we'll be cautious that we should not we should be cautious that uh, there should not be any jerk during doing the entire exercise and from there final position we will be slowly returning according to the position number 3 to 1. So this is the Sarvangasana. Uh, Asana, Sarvangasana, Sarvangasana and uh, this is a very good exercise. It has got the benefit of stimulating the thyroid gland. It is useful in varicose band, piles, hernia and menstrual disorders. So these are the benefits of this exercise. This is supine, supine uh, in, uh, poster Asana. So this, this exercise has got also limitations. People with cervical spondylosis, lower back pain, hypertension, should not do this posture. So uh, these people, uh, people with cervical spondylitis, spondylosis, lower back pain, hypertension, should not do, try to do this posture. So this is supine posture number one exercise. So next is, so we'll, we'll be doing only one uh, supine posture, there are a lot of uh, different uh, supine posture uh, asanas are also we can we can do all these uh, asanas but just to give you the idea how to arrange the uh, exercises I have shown you the, uh, the basic sarvangasana in supine posture so uh, likewise you can design and uh, this is a preliminary basic uh, in basic stage you can do this exercise you can practice these asanas and after getting some experience, you can go to advanced level of asanas slowly. So, uh, according to our training cycle, losing exercise we have done, Surya Namaskar we have done. Now, yoga posters we have done, Green yoga posters we have done, standing poster two we have, we have discussed, two standing poster yoga, two sitting poster yoga two prone posture yoga and one supine posture yoga. So likewise you can include or exclude uh, 
uh, different exercises are yoga poses in this training. So after that, doing uh, yoga poses, we can do pranayama. So maybe we will be taking some rest before doing pranayama, and then we can start pranayama. So pranayama means regulation of breath through certain techniques and exercises. So it is the basically breath control, regulation of your breath, pranayama. So in pranayama, we will be discussing Surya Anulam Bilam, Chandra Anulam Bilam, and Nari Suddhi. So three pranayamas. There are a lot of different pranayamas are there. You can do any of them, but these are the basic pranayama and just to give you an idea, uh, we will discuss these three. So, first one is Surya Anulam Bilam. <coughs> so, uh, all the pranayamas, we can sit in Vajrasana or any comfortable meditative poster. So, it should be comfortable enough for us to do the pranayama. So, we will be sitting in Vajrasana or any comfortable meditative poster. Now, we will be closing our left nostrils with the little and the ring finger of the right hand and we will be inhaling and exhaling slowly, slow deep inhaling, inhalation and exhalation through the right nostrils. We will be uh, closing the left nostrils throughout the entire exercise. One cycle of inhalation and exhalation forms one round. So, will inhale and exhale. This makes one round. So we can practice it for nine rounds. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give, uh, we'll notice that, we'll, we'll give uh, focus, or we'll keep focus on that, that our exhalation should be longer than the inhalation. So slow inhalation and the exhalation should be, the period of exhalation should be longer than the inhalation. So this is the Surya Bilom Bilom. Uh, the benefit, uh, the basic depression patients, they should practice it for 24, 27 rounds, four times a day. Maybe in breakfast, in lunch, in dinner, and before sleep, they can do, but it should be done for depression patients. It should be done 24 rounds, four times a day, 27 rounds, four times a day. So this is just the prescri prescription, so you can do it. So Surya Malam uh, now, will be moving towards Chandra Anulam Bilam. So in Chandra Anulam Bilam, what we'll do again, we'll be sitting in any Vajrasana or any meditative poster. Now, we'll be closing our right nostrils with the tip of our thumb. So this is a mudra. It is shown in this picture, in Surya Anulam picture, the hand is showing, this is a mudra, where thumb will be here and the middle and the, uh, uh, the ring finger will be here and I will be closing down the middle finger and the index finger. So this is a mudra. By this, we have done uh, the Surya Anulam Bilam. We, we will be closing the uh, nostrils to uh, our uh, small finger and the ring finger. So next is your Chandra Anulam Bilam where we will be keeping the mudra on hand and we will be <coughs> Closing the right process with the tip of the thumb finger of the right hand. So now we'll be inhaling and exhaling slowly through the left nostrils. Uh, all the time we'll be closing the right nostrils. And here one cycle exhalation, one one exhalation and one inhalation forms one round. So we'll be practicing it for nine rounds. Uh, it should be cautious that the time of the exhalation should be more than the time taken for inhalation. So, this is the procedure to do Sandra Anulam Bilam. Here, anxiety patients should do it for 27 rounds, four times. Likewise, as we said in the Surya Anulam Bilam, they can do it for 27 rounds, four times, breakfast, lunch, dinner, before sleep. So, this is the simple prescription if you are having anxiety you can follow this so there are some for chandra surya there are some 
limitations. People with high blood pressure and underweight problem should avoid Surya Omlam Bilam, the first one. The people who are having high blood pressure and underweight problem, they should avoid first one, Surya Omlam Bilam. People suffering from obesity and any type of allergy should avoid Chandra Omlam Bilam, the second one. So, some people should avoid the first one, some people should avoid the second one if you are having this type of problems like high blood pressure and underweight problem, they should avoid first one, Surya Omlam Bilam. And the people who are having suffering from obesity and allergic conditions, they should avoid Chandra Alnam Bilam. So these two are Pranayama, uh, first and second, and third one is Nari Shuddhi. So it is it is similar to Chandra Alnam Bilam. Here, the what we'll do, we'll sit in Vajrasana or any comfortable meditative posture. So it is common to all the three exercises, uh, uh, breathing exercises. We will be sitting in Vajrasana. If we find it tough, then we can sit in the meditative poster. Now, we will be closing the right nostrils with the tip of the thumb finger and of the right hand and exhale completely through the left nostrils. After exhaling, then again inhale through the left nostrils, same nostrils. Now, we will be closing the left nostrils with the ring and the little finger and we will be releasing, we will be exhaling through the right nostrils. Now, after exhaling completely, slowly and completely throughout the right nostrils. So, this will be repeated. First, we will we'll be closing down the right nostrils and we will be first exhaling and completely inhaling through the left nostrils and then again inhale through the same nostrils and Exhale through the other nostrils. So, this is this way we will do carry on doing this very uh, soon. So, we can practice it for nine rounds. Very soon can be also practiced for nine rounds. The benefits are it strengthens our body, lungs, and breath capacity. It increases blood flow, raises our vital energy, relax. The nervous system quiets the mind and boosts the immune system. So these are the benefits of uh, pranayama. Basically, pranayama. This three pranayama gives us these benefits. It strengthens our body and lung. Lung, lung is a very vital organ. So it strengthens our lung and the breathing capacity. It increases blood flow. Rises our vital energy. Relaxes the nervous system, entire nervous system will be relaxed, quite mind and boost immune system. So, this is very beneficial. Pranayama. So, after yoga, we have done pranayama. So, according to our training cycle, according to our training cycle, first we have done losing exercise. Then we have discussed Surya Namaskar. Then we have discussed different yoga posters, standing posters, sitting posters, prone posters, and supine posters. Then we, we have done pranayama. So in pranayama, we have done Surya Anulam Chandra Anulam Bilam, and Nari Suddhi. So here the entire training cycle ends. So this is the this is the that's it, training cycle for yoga for asana practices for for health and fitness. Now uh, meditation. So we will come down to meditation. Uh, you can do after 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 completion of pranayama. You can start with your meditation session. But uh, maybe if you are having lack of time, you can split it. You can do the uh, yoga pranayama practice in the morning and meditation in the evening or vice versa. So this is the process to follow this uh, training, training. And now we will be moving towards, we will be discussing a little about 
the meditation so what is meditation meditation is a yogic process of providing deep rest to our bodily systems by allowing the mind to calm down to its present state so uh, meditation with, with the help of meditation what we can do we can provide our body deep rest relaxation and the mind will calm down so this is the meditation by meditation we can do that so now, let us see now the benefits of meditation there are a lot of benefits of meditation but main benefits or meditation are mind focusing on a, on a single thought of choice choice so we can practice our focus we will be able after practicing meditation we will be able to focus our mind to a single thought of choice choice number 2 deep relaxation of all the body parts and entire body will be enjoying the relaxed state reduced metabolic rate by slowing down the breath or breath rate will be slowed down and the metabolic rate will be slowed down so number 4 freshness lightness and feeling of expansion at mental level so will be feeling freshness in our mental level we will be feeling fresh after a session of meditation lightness the entire mind and the body will be feeling lightness and expansion on our mental level our mental and mental state will be expanded so these are the benefits of meditation number 5 is cleanliness peace and seven bliss so it cleans down our mind it brings pleasantness to our mind and blissness so these are the benefits of meditation number 4 is continuous awareness so your awareness will continue so you will be experiencing continuous awareness so these are the basic benefits of meditation so nowadays uh, our lifestyle is very hectic so uh, everybody has stress and we cannot focus on one thought lot of conflicts of uh, thoughts is happening inside our brain so maybe by practicing meditation we can get this benefits so there are lot of different techniques of meditation lot of people follow different techniques of meditation there are different systems of meditations like trans can meditation is there cyclic meditation is there om meditation is there and use lot of meditations are there <coughs> so there are lot of complex type of meditation also there so we will be not going to the complex complex kind of meditation we will be discussing only simple foldable uh, we will be discussing only simple foldable kind of meditation over here for our and overall health and fitness so the trans can meditation for 20 minutes and cyclic meditation for 25 minutes can give more rest than 6 hours of 8 hours of sleep so uh, the such such rest meditation can provide so meditation has got very good uh, effect on our physical and mental health so we will be discussing only simple foldable to meditation we will be discussing only two different types of meditation over here so uh, first one is uh, the simplest form of meditation you can do it anywhere uh, maybe in your office also you can close down your door and you can do it for some time if you don't find any time but uh, the thing is uh, this is uh, the most simplest form of uh, meditation so in this type of meditation what we will do 
beginners for beginners this is very beneficial because in the beginning they may not be able to focus their mind to a single thought or of their choice so uh, in this uh, beginning stage you can practice it, this type of meditation here you can sit in any comfortable posture any comfortable posture it may not be a meditative posture you can sit anywhere <coughs> but the condition is your spine should be erect or if you can do padmasana it's better it's good but again uh, in any posture any form any any comfortable position you can sit and your spine spine should be erect now you will be closing your eyes and try to relax the entire body while closing your eyes you don't put pressure on your eyes you slowly close your eyes you close your eyelids and you just try to relax your shoulders relax your legs you can you try to relax the entire body from top to toe so <clears throat> now from here we will try to concentrate on our breathing we should try to feel the breath uh, we should try to feel the cool air coming in through our nostrils and warm our air going out so we should, we should feel that we should concentrate our entire focus to our breathing to our nostrils where while inhaling the cool air is coming in and while exhaling the warm air is going out so in this state we should try to feel it and we should try to feel this for a while uh, when we can very uh, fine we will be we will be, we'll be, we'll be observing the breathing very well we will be feeling the coolness and the warmth very well then in this state we will be performing five rounds of brahmari so what is brahmari brahmari is a humming bee breath using pranayama generally we will be we have got brahmari pranayama where we will be making a humming sound bee sound without breath which suitens the nervous system the benefits of brahmari is it's, it suitens our entire nervous system so we will be performing performing in this day after feeling the cool and warm air going in and out through our nostrils we will be performing five rounds of brahmari slowly uh, will and we will be repeating the brahmari and we will be trying to uh, in uh, after after verbally doing five rounds of brahmari then we will be repeating it, it with uh, in our mind and we will be trying to feel the vibration throughout the entire body the, the vibration of the brahmari mentally we will be trying to feel it through our entire body so in this state so we should enjoy the state the silence the inner silence we should enjoy enjoy this, this state and we will we'll try to be there for as much uh, time as we can so this is the type of simplest form of meditation so this this may in this meditation you can do it in any any place anywhere and you can do it for maybe initially 10 15 minutes if we can do it it's good for us so this type of simple meditation techniques in the beginning we should practice and uh, it will bring it will bring peaceness calmness to our mind so this is this is the simplest form of meditation and after that we will be discussing omkar meditation so omkar meditation so omkar meditation is uh, is also a very simple kind of meditation uh, basically you can practice it for, uh, in, in a comfortable place uh, where nobody can disturb you uh, it, uh, 
the, the simple fast fast meditation you can do anywhere but uh, in this in this home meditation you need a isolated place where you can sit down comfortably and uh, during uh, this omkar meditation you will be sitting in comfort any comfortable position or uh, padmasana or any meditative posture but the main thing is your spinal cord should be erect so in first phase what will do we'll close eyes we'll slowly close eyes uh, we'll not put pressure on our on our eyelids softly slowly we'll close down our eyes and we'll 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 start chanting om in our mental level mentally we'll be chanting om repeatedly so during this period we will try to chant om continuously without any break so here nothing should distract us and we will be continuously chanting the om in our mental level so after doing chanting for a while we will be now slowing down the chanting speed we will be slowing down the chanting speed the om in mental level will be slowing down the speed of chanting so after that after slowing down the speed of om chanting we will be moving towards phase 2 so in phase 2 what will do we will be slowing down in the mental level the om chanting of om and we will be observing the gap between two oms like first om and the second om the gap between it we should try to focus on that period as you as you slow down further the gap between om becomes wider and wider so we will be slowly widening the chanting of om and finally will be diffusing the chanting of om in silence so it needs practice with some practice you can uh, obviously do this uh, initially maybe uh, you will fail but slowly 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 if you practice it you can do it and you should diffuse in silence so so in this silent states you should be visualizing and feeling the ocean of silence a huge silence in, in this silence you should enjoy the silence and after a while you should be gently gently soft waves of om should be done in this state in, in this state so slowly you will be chanting om after a long gap and you should be enjoying the silence state in this in this phase so now so we will be merging into complete silence there should be no home chanting nothing will distract us we will be only in silence we will try to remain in this state for a while as far as we can and we will after practice with practice we can we will try to maximize this time this is the main uh, main beauty of Uh, doing meditation this you, you should enjoy this time and you should try to longer this time so depending upon your capacity uh, you will be remaining on this uh, phase and after that in this day we will we'll let one om sat <coughs> with our uh, audible sound we will will we'll sound one om audibly we will sound and again we will go back to the silent state so this way we will be we will be coming out of the meditative phase <coughs> now finally uh, we will be blinking our eyes directly do not do not open, don't open eyes directly it is somewhat injurious so we will be finally blinking our eyes slowly blinking our eyes and then slowly and gently we will open our eyes and come out of meditation
So this is the procedure. This is little bit, uh, little bit intermediate type of uh, meditation. So the first one meditation I have, uh, I have, uh, we have discussed, discussed is very simple and that can be done by anybody. But uh, the second phase after 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 doing for some time the first simple kind of meditation you can practice this own meditation. <coughs> So now, uh, <coughs> with this, uh, my entire presentation is almost finished. So let us revise once from uh, the first what we have discussed so far. So uh, first, we have been, we have tried to define the fitness. What is fitness? So according to uh, first, we have to define health. So, according to World Health Organization, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. It is not merely absence of diseases. Then, we have tried to define the physical fitness. What is it? It is the ability to perform different aspects of sports, occupation, and daily activities, daily life. So, how how good our body is to handle all the <coughs> physical and mental stress put upon us by the daily activities. So now after that we have discussed the benefits of physical exercises, any kind of physical exercise. Then we have tried to see what is yoga. So we have seen what is yoga and then the benefit of yoga, pranayama and meditation. We have tried to design one demo training cycle to do any training session on yoga, meditation and pranayama. So here first comes the loosening exercise, then Surya, Surya Namaskar, then yoga posters, then pranayama, then our second aims. After, after pranayama we can do meditation or we can do the meditation session in a different time. So in yoga practices what we do? Loosening exercise, spot jogging, relaxation, forward backward bending, side bending, twisting. Bhavadam Uttasana Kriya and rocking and rolling. These are the warm up exercises we have done. After that, we have discussed Surya Namaskar. So, Surya Namaskar is a 12 step uh, exercise done back to back. Different yoga postures done back to back. Uh, so, the benefits of Surya Namaskar we have seen. There are 12 mantras uh, in Surya Namaskar. So, we have to chant one mantra and do one post, uh, one cycle, one cycle. After that, so that way, 12 cycles, 12 exercise back to back, 12 cycles we can do. After that, we have uh, discussed about yoga posters. So, here, standing posters, Ardhakati Sakrasana and Ardha Sakrasana, we have discussed. Then, sitting poster, Sasankrasana and Prachimutasana, we have discussed. And then, prone poster, Bhujangasana and Salavasana, we have discussed. And in supine poster, we have discussed Sarvangasana. So after that, Pranayama. In Pranayama, we have discussed Surya Anulam Bilam, Nandara Anulam Bilam and Nari Shuddhi. So these three are very simple kind of Pranayama we can do. Then in meditation, we have seen what is the benefit of meditation. There are a lot of kind of meditation type meditative, meditative techniques. So we, we, have, we have discussed only two meditative techniques. First one is very simple meditative technique which everybody can do in their any place and second one is somewhat a uh, little difficult but it's again practice, practice may, uh, with practice you can do it perfectly. So this is the end of my uh, presentation today. So maybe anybody uh, wants to throw some light or add something or have any queries. If time permits, we can discuss. Yes, I would like to request the participants to raise a few questions. If they have any, please. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Uh, sir, from what age we can do this asana, sir? Is there any minimum uh, age? Ch Children can do? See, uh, yeah, uh, there are no fixed age, but uh, it is better that you should uh, 
you should uh, you should involve your children after 12 years 12 to 14 years it's it's, it's good because before that they should be uh, they, they should be doing what they enjoy okay. basically the games and all uh, plays no? they, they what they do they enjoy those things more so if you put them in the yoga they'll be not enjoying the thing so maybe after 12 years it's good okay thank you okay i think the participants don't have any queries now okay uh, i would like to thank mr bhaskar kosik for his informative talk on yoga pranayama and fitness